Hello, I'm Janine Jung. Some of you may know me from my time with the Mighty Mapillary. Post Mapillary, I'm still helping people figure out how to collect street level imagery and put it to good use. This year, many people need street level imagery for mapping related to COVID and catastrophes. There has been no shortage of catastrophes in 2020. Organizations like Humanitarian Open Street Map and the Red Cross have long established protocols for exactly this purpose. The relentless string of calamities this year has underscored challenges in these protocols. I'm going to highlight some of these challenges, how we want to address them, and what we can actually get done today. First, it's often unsafe to travel to postcat areas to collect imagery. If you live in California or Colorado, you've seen skies like this recently, and you've probably stayed inside. Here in NYC, the skies were clear, but the streets were empty during that first phase of lockdown. When the city closed off streets and set up makeshift bike lanes, there was demand for fresh imagery, but no one we could send out to collect. A common suggestion was to get essential workers who were already out and about to collect this imagery. This is easier said than done. There are many efforts underway right now to streamline workflows for passive collection, so fleets can collect imagery while fighting fires or delivering packages, but I've yet to see any widespread public implementation of this. Instead, what I found to be a tried and true solution is simply finding dedicated professionals to get the job done. In some states, surveyors are essential workers. They're well equipped and experienced, even if they're unfamiliar with OSM. We recently helped a global mapping company collect post earthquake imagery in Puerto Rico by finding a qualified vendor on the ground who was able to mobilize immediately. Second, imagery depicting significant impact on personal property or worse, human life is tough to share publicly. In addition, in times like this, when reactions to crises can be so politicized, there's even more concern about what can be extracted by whom for unanticipated use. What we all want are airtight guarantees that no personal data can be leaked when imagery is shared openly. Mapillary has developed the world's best blurring models for faces and license plates, but as privacy concerns grow, these goalposts keep moving. While we sort this out, a path to reducing risk may simply be to have imagery hosted on private clouds or on premise. We're helping a state agency right now interested in collecting post wildfire imagery figure out how to host it themselves with the viewer that's connected to OSM. We're thinking about best practices to keep the community involved, for example, linking to individual photos only for edit validation. Finally, detailed evaluation of risk and damage often requires more than what can be easily collected with smartphones. The World Bank's Resilient Housing Project had to collect imagery in Latin America using a high-end Trimble MX-7 to analyze building heights and completeness. Another example is a project led by NYU this summer modeling COVID transmission across surface vectors near healthcare facilities. While street-level imagery was collected using cell phones, the researchers ended up using LiDAR to create a 3D model to study human interactions. Anyone collecting street level imagery with cell phones hoping to get any degree of accuracy for measuring is bound for disappointment today. Again, many efforts are underway to reach the holy grail, high accuracy 3D models from low cost devices. And I highly recommend sitting in on Pixel 8 Sean Gorman's session on this today. But these situations require rich and accurate data here and now. We're helping an NGO assess how to acquire pre and post cat measurements of poles and other infrastructure by recommending collection using a ladybug system today and piloting viewer software, which will allow them to measure within the imagery. Solutions like this aren't new, but have previously existed within silos. We aim to make this available to OSM. Professionals mapping in private with pro equipment and tools isn't new or groundbreaking and doesn't sound like OpenStreetMap. But until technology catches up, doing things that don't scale to address these urgent problems will introduce new players to OSM, plus teach us a thing or two about economic models and best practices that support different approaches. COVID and catastrophe will ultimately make mapping from street level imagery better in the long run. Thank you.